Hello, hello, hello. I wanted to share with you guys or share with anyone who might find this useful the top five things that I wish I was aware of during my sewing journey. This video initially came to be with me considering, you know, well, you know, what are the top five tips that I might have for beginner sewists? And I don't necessarily know if this would apply to true beginners, although it, it certainly might. I found that the struggle was in the journey, kind of past that initial beginner stage and more into developing skill or developing some experience. So these are my top five things. I'm gonna start with number five. Recognize when you need to change your sewing needle. This was a little bit of a tough one for me because I was sort of on my own in figuring out how to sew. I just didn't have the practice or the skill to recognize when the issue was the machine and when it was my own lack of understanding about a pattern or a project. Two separate things, by the way. Change the needle before every project. You might not literally need to change it before every project and you can get away with it if you don't, but it's a good way to remind yourself, am I using a fresh, sharp needle that is not going to kind of push my fabric down into the bobbin and all sorts of other things that will drive you crazy when you're trying to sew. Really basic one there, I'm sure, and I'm confident that many of you have heard that in the past and you have great skills around that. But for anyone who who that might be helpful, you know, just, just change your needle. Before a new project, change out that needle. The number four tip is to start with cottons. So in terms of overall fabrics, if you stick to things that are easier to sew, cottons, linens, thin cottons, thicker cottons, when you are in the fabric store, quilting cottons will really catch your eye because they're very vibrant and colorful and you'll find something that really speaks to you. They are stiffer, so you may or may not want to wear them, but they're still really great options in terms of basic fabrics. Fabrics to avoid if you're a beginner and they're not required by your project are things like jerseys, polyester, rayons, Choose what's in your budget. Number three, the number three thing that I wish I had some awareness about when I was ramping up my sewing skills is that skill with a sewing machine and skill with sewing projects is different. So sewing projects such as garment making, quilting, home furnishings or housewares, those sorts of things are their own standalone skill. Using a sewing machine is its own standalone skill. So just in my personal experience, I was super comfortable using a sewing machine since I was a kid, since I was 10 years old, but it took a long time before I was comfortable sewing clothing. And it's because I used to think I just wasn't good at it. I just didn't have a natural talent for it. I didn't have a knack for it. I stuck to things that were square shaped or really simple, such as pillowcases, or curtains. I really didn't give myself credit for the fact that sewing clothing was just as much of a skill as learning how to use a machine or learning how to sew housewares. Keep that in mind. If you're a beginner and you're practicing all of the things, you might come up against challenges with the machine. You might come up with challenges related to garment sewing, understanding patterns, understanding how different shapes are meant to fit. Same with quilting. One of the struggles that I have with quilting is the small cutting of the pieces and having them be equal. Still a challenge for me, but I could actually see past it now as its own standalone skill and something to devote time and energy and effort with. It doesn't all just click. It doesn't just mean if you're great at using a sewing machine that this is all just gonna click or the other way around. Skill in one does not equal skill in the other and there's a learning process to give yourself grace and patience with. The number two thing that I wish that I was exposed to and was taught, and you know, I probably was, I just wasn't hearing it, is to, if you're feeling frustrated, if you're feeling frustrated with a project, frustrated with the sewing machine, something like that, stand up, walk away, give yourself 15 minutes, 20 minutes, as much time as you need to shift gears and to get out of that stuck way of thinking. That way of thinking that clearly wasn't serving you and wasn't moving you forward with your project. This might mean doing something different, getting a snack, getting some water, going outside. Then when you do feel that you're in a more clear state of mind, revisit your pattern instructions, check out what's going on with your sewing machine, and then decide what you want to do next. If you're truly stumped and you can't find the answer and you're looking at your project and you're holding it and you're ready to move on, based. 
So that's my strategy when I just, I need to see it come together somehow. I will baste it into place. I change my stitch length on the machine from whatever it was, 2.5 millimeters. I'll change it to 5.5 or six and I'll baste it into place. I'll take it off the machine, check my work and I'll see and I'll have a better visual of whatever is actually going wrong. If it's correct, awesome. I, all I have to do is change the stitch length again and stitch over that line that I created with the basting. If it's incorrect, super easy to pick out and it doesn't damage the fabric too much. So baste, when in doubt, baste. All right, my number one tip or advice that I wish I was aware of in life, this is not even just sewing in all honesty, and that is trust the process. Whether you are taking an in-person class or a online class or you're winging it and reading from a book, trust the process. It all comes from practice, it all comes from experience, and it will come together. And also trust that with each project or each practice session or each time you sit down at the machine, you are gaining experience that's all part of the overall exposure and immersion in the learning of sewing. Creativity, like everything else, is a journey. It's a process. It's it's not the end result. The creativity is in the making. So play with your tools, play with your machine, play with your fabrics, play with your threads, play with sample projects, do basic stitching, get more experimental, play with what you have available to you and you will learn as you go. Kind of the number zero tip that I would offer that I didn't include on my original list is it's not talent that gets you further along any creative practice. It's practice. There might be some talents where things come a little bit easier to people or things click a little bit faster or maybe they were exposed to something early that has carried them through. For example, I was exposed to sewing on a sewing machine really early in my life and I was able to practice and wing it and do it without any fear of anything. And if if anything didn't come together, I would move on. So as you take on a new creative practice such as sewing, it might feel impossible at times. There's no rushing the process, there's just practice. Be patient with yourself and understand that you're still learning. And the same way, once upon a time, you learned how to hold a pencil and write on a piece of paper, you are learning how to use a sewing machine and stitch together something that you could be proud of.